today. So glad that you're here. Good to see you. We've got several things for you this morning. Oh, and welcome to the folks at home. Glad that you're joining us as well. Uh, yesterday, we had a beautiful wedding here at St. Andrews. Uh, Brian and Jennifer Stevens were married here yesterday. Um, they are friends of mine, needed a place to get married, and so we opened up the church for them, and it was a huge success. So um, we're looking forward to having this be a ministry to the community and to have other folks come in and use our building for such things. Um, it's a uh, Kind of an exciting thing to do. It went very, very well. Um, today is also Don and Millie's day, so um, don't forget to go over to the Don and Millie's over here at <clears throat> 84th and O. Tell them you're from St. Andrews, and then 20% of your ticket comes back to the youth group. So thank you in advance for that. We had vacation Bible school this week. There were about 45 kids, um, including probably 15 to 20 preschoolers that were just all, you know, arms and legs and all over the place. Uh, the triplets came. Um, they're not here this morning, but they were there for vacation Bible school, which was really interesting because I was out of context, so they weren't quite sure who I was until they really looked at me and saw it was me, and then it was, it was a free-for-all. Pastor! So it was great. Super, super fun. Uh, we welcome Becky Risto to be with us this morning. Um, she is a mental health care provider in Lincoln and is here to talk about how she uses faith to, to help with her vocation. So um, welcome, Becky. We're glad that you're here. And her husband, Andrew. Super glad you're here as well. Um, I just want to, I want to say a word about what happened this week with the Supreme Court. Um... I just feel like I would be remiss if I didn't say something. As you know, Roe v. Wade was overturned. And I can only imagine the spectrum of feeling about that. Some of you, I'm sure, are rejoicing. Some of you are grieving. Um, if you have been on my Facebook page, you know exactly where I stand on that. But I want to say that the ELCA has a social statement about abortion. And you can find that at the website. It's elca.org. Um, nose around in there until you find the social statements, and because there's like 50 of them now. <clears throat> there's a ton of them. But somewhere on that list, if they're alphabetized, it'll be toward the top. Um, but I don't know that they are. They might be in chronological order. But in any event, it is available out there. And our church stands on... Um, that abortion should not be entered into lightly, uh, flippantly. It should not be used as an oops kind of birth control, but rather um, something that should be legal and safe for people if they need it in cases of tragedy, such as rape, incest, the life of the mother. Um, I think that's a good place to stand for our church. I cannot say I'm completely in alignment with that, but I can live with it. I think it's, as I say, I think it's a good place to stand. Um, I don't know where you are, but um, if you have some feelings about that, some concerns about that, I would welcome conversation about that. Um, be glad to point you to, to the social statement. We can walk through that together. Um, be glad to talk with you about it. Um, whether you're excited or devastated or somewhere in between, uh, be glad to have that conversation if, if, you, if you would like. Um, yeah. So it's, um, well, I don't want to say anymore. I think that's, that's enough. <clears throat> I don't want to get in trouble. In any event, it's an interesting day in our country, and, uh, and we need to pray, keep our country in our prayers as we move forward. Okay, on that cheery note, please stand as you're able, and we'll begin worship with our confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Jesus calls to the crowd with warnings. He calls to the converts to follow him. Jesus calls to the resistors with parables of rejection. Jesus calls to you, proclaim the kingdom of God. And the people answer, thanks be to God. Closed with the mantle of baptism and protected by God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sins to God and to one another. Merciful God, we confess that we desire was not your will. We fear failure and cling to unquestioned habits. We are truly sorry and repent of what we have done and what we have not done. Show us the path of your prophetic way. Open our eyes to new ventures. Help us love our neighbors as ourselves. Forgive us and renew us in the name of life abundant, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, and peace given to you through God's grace. By the power vested in me as a minister of the Church of Jesus Christ, I proclaim that you are forgiven. Live in the word of the Lord and be made new. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Shining 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. pray. Sovereign God, ruler of our hearts, you call us to obey you, and you favor us with true freedom. Keep us faithful to the ways of your Son, that leaving behind all that hinders us, we may steadfastly follow your paths. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated. The first reading for this morning is from 1 Kings chapter 19. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Yehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel, and you shall anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, of Abel-Menola, as prophet in your place. 
So he set out from there and found Elisha, son of Saphat, who was plowing. There were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him, and he was with the 12th. Elisha passed by him and threw his mantle over him. He left the oxen, ran after Elisha, and said, Let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. Then Elisha said to him, Go back again, for what have, for what have I done to you? He returned from following him, took the yoke of oxen, and slaughtered them. Using the equipment from the oxen, he boiled their flesh and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out and followed Elisha and became his servant. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please read responsive with me, Psalm 16. Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. As, As for, for the, the holy ones, ones in the land, land they, they are, are the noble in, in whom is, is all my delight. delight. Those who choose another God multiply their sorrows. Their drink offering of blood I will pour out or take their names upon my lips. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my chosen portion and my, my cup. cup. You, you hold, hold my, my lot. lot. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a, God, a goodly heritage. I bless, bless the Lord who gives me counsel. counsel. In, in the, the night, night also, also my heart, heart instructs, instructs me. me. I keep the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, Therefore my, my heart, heart is glad and my, my soul rejoices. rejoices. My, my body, body also rests secure. secure. For you do not give me up to Sheol, or let me faith, let your faithful ones see the pit. You show Come me on, the path, path of life. life. In, In your presence there is fullness of joy. In, In your right hand are pleasures forevermore. gospel is from the ninth chapter of Luke. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'd like to invite the kids to come up for children's time. And as they make their way forward, I forgot to say that we have a new baby in the congregation. I put the rose on the altar, and then I completely forgot to announce it. So Kevin Levi Rudnick was born on the 23rd. <clears throat> he was 8 pounds, 3 ounces, and 20 inches long. So we celebrate with the Rudnick family. How is everyone today? Are you good? Yeah? Good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm going to have to get some light-up shoes. 
Boy, Brooklyn, you and me, we, we are out of the loop here, but um, Braden and Victoria have light-up shoes. Those are snazzy. I like those. Well, Brooklyn, sometimes we have some. Do you have some at home? You just didn't wear them today? Oh, gotcha. You have light-up boots? That's amazing. Well, yesterday I had white shoes, and now they're gone because they don't fit, and then they're getting a little too small. Well, because you're growing so fast. Yeah, so That's I'm why. really cool, so I can only wear my black. There they're, you go. They're the same size as me. Very I'm good. Five. And you're five. And how old are you, Brooklyn? And you're six now. Wow. You're all getting so big. My goodness. So, but because you are four, five, and six, you probably know how to play follow the leader. Have you played follow the leader before? Yeah, Brooklyn knows. Brayden, Victoria, do you know how to play follow the leader? No? <clears throat> so follow the leader is where someone is the leader, okay? And they start doing things and then everybody else has to do what they do. So Brooklyn, do you wanna pick one thing for all of us to do? And we'll do what you do? No? Okay. Do you want me to demonstrate and then, Brayden, you can take a turn? Okay. Can you rub your tummy like this and then pat your head? Yeah? Good. Good. Oh, some people are doing it out there. Look at that. Okay. You pick something. What should we do? Do what? What's that? Oh, rub your foot. Okay. Rub your foot. Okay, good. Victoria, what should we do? Should we stretch out our legs? That feels good. Let's stretch out our legs. Ah, yeah, super. Brooklyn, you want to pick one? Okay. What should we do? Clap. Oh, more than once? I'm sorry. Good job. Good job. Is it fun to be the leader? It is fun, right? Is, it, is it fun to follow? Yeah, but sometimes when Fido is our leader, because all in the class at daycare always wants us to be the leader. We have to take turns being the leader, right? We can't all be the leader all the time. No, you can't take spots from the leader either. You're right. You're right. But a leader isn't a very good leader if there's nobody who follows. Right? Because how silly would it be if I was sitting here rubbing my tummy, patting my head, and I'm the only one doing it? I'd look pretty silly, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> do you think Jesus was a leader? Yeah? He was a really good leader, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. What would have happened if the disciples hadn't done what he said? They won't, um... He'd look kind of funny, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yep. He'd be very funny. Yeah. But sometimes when you get your little feet, that makes you laugh and tickle your armpit. Uh huh. That, are you ticklish right here? When you do some stuff like hard stuff, like I can't quite tickle myself because mine are only a little smaller. When I grow up, I can tickle myself and that would be good. <laughs> I don't think you can tickle yourself. <clears throat> I don't think that's possible. Can you, can you tickle yourself? Do you tickle yourself? Yeah, but it can't make me laugh. Oh, but it doesn't make you laugh. Okay. And well, sure. Daddy and mommy can tickle you, sure. Yeah, but daddy always wants to do that because he loves me. Of course he does. Daddy likes to tickle you because he loves you. That's right. Yeah, but sometimes I do it to daddy, and now daddy does it to me. <laughs> That's awesome. And I like tickles. You like tickles? Yeah, tickles are fun, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. 
So if, if Jesus is our leader, I bet Jesus was ticklish too, come to think of it. I bet he was. Because Jesus liked to laugh. We know that. Yeah, <clears throat> but he's not in the Toy Story camp yet. But some people, um, probably God can tickle him. Probably. Yep. Yep. Santa. Or Santa. Yeah, but he can go up in the sky too. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't even remember what I was saying. What were they saying? Uh, um, saying Jesus. Jesus was a leader. Yes, Jesus was a leader. And just, <laughs> we're going to wrap this up. So, so just as um, when we were playing follow the leader, if Jesus is our leader, then we need to do what Jesus did, which was to love people, right? Jesus was all about loving people. So we, we can do that, and if we can do that, we can make this world a much better place. Yeah, good. I'm ready to pray. So let's fold our hands and bow our heads, and then you repeat after me, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for being our leader. Help us to be more and more like you. Amen. Good job. Thanks for coming up today. You can go back to your seats. I'll see you later. Wow. With Braden, you put that nickel in, you just got to let it play out. What a sweetie. That was awesome. Um, again, we welcome Becky Risto. <clears throat> we thank her for being with us today as she talks about um, her vocation, what her, her work life is like, and how faith interacts with all of that. So Becky, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Uh, a sincere thank you to the Faith Partners Program and to your pastor for welcoming me here this morning. Um, I just wanted to share a few thoughts on mental health and faith. Um, it was kind of an open-ended question when we were approached this know, a couple months ago. It was, how does your understanding of mental health or your understanding of your faith impact how you work with mental health. And to make sense of the rest of what I'm going to say is I don't know depression, anxiety, trauma, all of these are a result, uh, you know, all of these symptoms are if we have this big book called the DSM-5, which is supposed to be the, okay, here's the list of everything that could be wrong. This is a whole book that just says these are maladaptive coping mechanisms that have outweighed their purpose, but they've come as a result of trying to protect myself from things that have been pretty awful. So if we can, the rest of my talk, if we can come at it from that, that mental health, mental illness is actually just incredibly isolating. I, I'm without community and I'm lost and I'm scared. And this is just a book of ways to describe that. The rest of this hopefully will make sense. So the question, how does my faith impact my understanding of mental health? It's a loaded question. Uh, but I think my, my answers are best summarized into three statements. The first is that we're always trying to find meaning. And the second is a concept that we as Lutherans are under, you know, understand as sanctification. And then the third is that God suffered too. Like God suffered too. So to expand on the, the answers, my first is meaning. Uh, Christian and non-Christian alike, we all encountered three spiritual questions throughout our lives. Who am I? Where am I going? And why am I here? And a lot of us get these answers through our faith tradition, but I believe faith and religion have typically been the answers, whereas we, for, especially for millennials and Generation Z, which would be the primary population that I serve, those my age, pretty much 40 and younger, um, it, even without religion, we're still faced with these questions. Who am I? Where am I going? And why am I here? And so even though religion is fading for a lot of people in these generations, the questions are louder than ever. Uh, we go back to somebody named Nietzsche, if you remember your philosophy class. Uh, my dad's also a philosophy professor, so had to throw him in there. Nietzsche was actually a son of a minister as well that also let go of the faith, and he said, if... God is dead, and if God is dead, we've got blood on our hands, and what is it about us that has to atone for this? 
what is it that has to atone for this and how do we become the best part of ourselves or gods in our own life so that we can answer our own urge so that we can can wash our hands of this blood but must we ourselves not become gods to to simply appear worthy of being okay that i'm okay that i'm not alone but i'll leave that quote hanging in the air and move on to the second part of the answer because this will all come together at the end uh, so the next answer to this how does my faith understanding impact how i understand mental health comes into this idea of sanctification sanctification is the process of being freed from sin and purified and what we understand that sometimes or how i think we hear that is how do i become a better christian what must i do to be a better christian what does that mean i believe that sanctification goes beyond just being a better christian and it's it's more in line with good mental health good mental health is to align yourself properly between law and gospel not only do i have to just be la 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 and be a better christian but where does christ come into it where was christ being a good leader where was christ being the leader in my life and where was he a part of me uh just being there with me that's the gospel promise that we have is that i'm not alone anymore uh so i cannot be god in my own life but that doesn't mean that i don't earnestly that i don't tire endlessly trying I can't be my own leader. I can't be my own leader. They just talked about it. The littles talked about it probably more eloquently than I ever could. I cannot be God in my own life. Uh, it looks silly, but it doesn't mean I don't stop trying personally. Um, and I know I'm not the only one. So as I continue to counsel, uh, especially millennials and Generation Z, I have a growing theory that without faith, self-improvement has become the new religion even without faith self-improvement has become the new religion and this is true even for those that have faith how can i be a better person how can i be the better person that's going to show up on instagram or show up on whatever so social media and get all the likes and and i have arrived and what we are left with is this quest for perfectionism so perfectionism fails to take into the depth to take the depth of human sinfulness very seriously for those without faith it looks like a heavy focus on civil righteousness and sometimes it's well am i being enough for my political party am i aligning enough with my political party am i aligning enough with my neighbors am i aligning enough with this that heavy focus on civil righteousness which is equally lawful and equally as emptying because again it points back for me when i've tried to do that that i can be god in my own life or we can become the ideal community what is it that i can do we can be the best community we can build a name for ourselves and the problem is we can't escape our own sinful nature and we can't escape other people's sinful nature so we will always be fear fearful and feel alone it's idolatrous to believe that we can be god and we need to be rescued from a fall known as our original sin the elders in our church have been reading a book and there's this really great, great quote that my husband and I just felt, finally, okay, it, it, somebody nailed it, it, that what millennials really want from church is not a change in style, but it's a change in substance. We're not looking for a church that will just, you know, obviously we want to be welcomed, but we're not looking for a church that says, here's a latte, here's this, now go on about your day, we've, we've created something bigger and better and more exciting for you to participate in but we really want to change in substance because all of us what we really long for is jesus we really long for jesus we need a leader because we feel alone and we feel lost we long for jesus but also because we know that god suffered too and it's in jesus that we know god suffered too god suffered with us so being lutheran one of the things i like is our little paradox that we are saint and sinner at the same time. Uh, and that means that we will always experience fluctuations of faith. And God came down in the flesh to live as a man, to look at the Father and experience the same temptations and experience the same. How did these, how do, how do our, how do our creator, how did the people that we created, how did they see us? 
How do they see us when they're down here? How do they see us? And God experienced that too. He experienced the fear, looking up and saying, what's going on here? Because somebody else has to, somebody's taking the lead on this. And, and it, we all experience those fluctuations of faith. And that can be incredibly isolating. But Christ met us at the same time feeling very alone and experiencing what it meant to be alone and isolated from community. community and he meets us in our weakness. So going back, I believe mental illness is incredibly isolating, and usually uh, it's the set of coping me mechanisms that have outweighed their purpose, or they've been a result of pretty horrific things, which usually lends to the term often that we forget, but we know all too well, with this, which is this idea of if God is all good, then why does he let bad things happen? We as Christians understand that too. But if God is real or if God is so good, why does he let bad things happen? I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. And even with some of my clients, Christian or non-Christian, why is this happening? Or why did this happen? I don't know. I don't know. But I do have faith that the wrongdoings of others will be accounted for, sometimes by the church, sometimes by the government, but never always. Never always will this be taken care of. Um, the important thing for me is to remember that the very institutions that God empowered for order to, our, to chaos in our environment has been, that, has been church and state, and both church and state failed Jesus. So God gets it. God suffered too. The very institutions that God empowered and instituted to keep order to chaos failed Jesus. And that Jesus suffered loss, betrayal at the hands of people he trusted, he was ostracized from his own community, and he was even put to death wrongfully. He was falsely accused, wrongfully put to death. So he gets it. He gets it when it's confusing because he's been there and he's still here because finally the very nature of science was used backwards. That life came after death for Jesus and he was raised from the dead and we're granted a promise that we will be with God and that we're never alone. I think I noticed there was even a loss in the last week. And, and we have the hope and promise of Easter that we're not alone. Like We're still not alone at each one of these difficult moments. Christ is right with us because he was raised from the dead. So in short, my answer to how my faith impacts my understanding of mental health is summarized best by C.S. Lewis. That wrong will be right when Aslan comes in sight. At the sound of his roar, sorrows will be no more. When he bears his teeth, winter meets its death, and when he shakes his mane, we will have spring again. And I really appreciate your time. I know that was a very short message, but I think the kids also covered it very well, that we just need Jesus. I can't be God in my own life. So thank you very much for the invitation to be here this morning. I will pass it over to Pastor. Above the storm. 
storms of passion, the murmurs of self-will now speak to you are able. <clears throat> we are God's people by baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now join our hearts and our minds together in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather together to sing our praises to you, to bring our cares and concerns before you and lay them at your feet. We thank you, O oh God, for being our leader. We cannot lead ourselves. We are lost without you and that is abundantly clear. Anytime we try to lead ourselves, we get lost. Thank you for the call to come and follow you. It is a steep path. It is costly. It cost you everything you had, including your life, and it will cost us the same. But in you, we find life. We find love, we find wholeness, we find all those things that we're looking for. If only we can keep our eyes on you. Thank you for being our leader. Help us to follow you no matter what, so that through you and because of you, we can work together to bring your light and your love into the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord God, for your church throughout the world, and we ask your blessing on every faithful heart who gathers in your name. Help us continue to work together, to work past our differences and to find those things that we have in common so that together we can be the city on the hill and a beacon of light to give hope to those who are lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord God, for your world. We thank you for this beautiful creation that you have given to us to enjoy. Thank you for the rain that comes in the right amounts that makes things green and beautiful and lush this time of year. Thank you for hearing our prayers and for being with farmers and ranchers and those who work the land that they have what they need to have abundant flocks or herds or crops. Help us, O oh God, to take good care of your beautiful planet and help us to walk lightly upon it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the nations of the world, particularly places that are living in violence, conflict, fear, or injust <clears throat> injustice. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Russia. We pray, Lord, for an end to this conflict before it escalates into something far worse than it already is. 
Please be with the leaders of nations and work with them to help them find a peaceful solution to this conflict. We pray for those who suffer in Sudan and in other places of the world, that your Holy Spirit would rest in those places as well and bring pre peace to your peoples and to their leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation. Our nation is so deeply divided over many, many things, and it's very difficult to come to any sort of consensus. Lord, please be with us. Turn our hearts to you. Turn our eyes to you. And help us to think more about our neighbors than about ourselves. We pray for those places that have been devastated by tornadoes or hurricanes or wildfires or earthquakes. Please be with those folks who are suffering. And bless those who are coming to help. Let their resources be abundant. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord God, for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for those who are grieving, especially the Uyghur family. We pray for those who are dying. And we pray for folks who do not know you. We pray for the lost, that they would come to know of your mercy and your grace. Hear now the names we lift before you who are in special need of your loving care, whether we speak those names out loud or from within our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank and praise you, O God, for the ways that you use us in the Meadow Lane neighborhood. Thank you for our relationship with the school next door. Thank you for our food pantry. Thank you for the ministry of hospitality that has become so important to who we are. Thank you for the opportunity to allow Jen and Brian Stevens to be married here yesterday. The joy that was in this place was palpable and so exciting to see. It's just really, it was really exciting to see two people so deeply in love and their friends here to support them. Thank you for that. And thank you for the willingness of this congregation to open its doors to support people who want to be married in the church. We ask, Lord, that you continue to create opportunities for us to offer, offer our hospitality to those in need. And please bless that opportunity so that we can share your love with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting that you hear us and will answer us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Just a closer walk with thee, that Jesus is my plea.
Before he died, our Lord Jesus took bread, he gave thanks, and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to them all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is God's table and everyone is welcome here. So come, you who have great faith and you who wish you had more. Come, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time. Come, you who have tried to follow and you who have fallen short. Come, not because I invite you but because God desires to meet you here. And for those who are celebrating at home, please know that you are part of this table and part of this meal. This is the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The congregation may be seated.
the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ give us strength for today and hope for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen.
humbly with God. Leave no stone unturned. We are called to follow Jesus. Whenever we heed the word of the Lord, we turn toward what is good and beautiful. Go in peace. Bring God's love and light into the world. Go with joy, reaching out, sharing grace. Thanks be to God.